Welcome back for part two of the electric mini where we're getting all this fitted in. We're gonna plug in the safe disconnect and we're gonna get these wheels to spin. So let's go. As previously mentioned by Chris, I think in episode one, this is a onboard charger and DC-DC all in one. So this takes the power in from the charge port and spits out the charger HV system, but it also takes power from the HV system and sends 12 volt to the, the 12 volt battery to recharge it just like an alternator would in a car. So on there you've got your earth, your chassis earth, and you've got a 12 volt feed that goes to the 12 volt battery. I'm gonna bolt this into this bracket now, which is what's gonna hold it up under the rear subframe. And then we'll make all the relevant connections to the charge port and to the loom that's hanging down here somewhere that connects to this to charge the battery packs. Charger mounting. The bracket the charger is mounted into mounts into the under the rear subframe. It fixes using two bolt holes at the rear of the subframe here, which were previously or originally used, I should say, for an exhaust uh, mount. And some holes here in the sides at the front, which I can only imagine must be jig holes or something. They, they don't really look like they're generally used for anything, but they've been managed to be picked up on by Felton to ensure we don't have to drill any other extra holes in the car. We're gonna go ahead and bolt this in and then we can make the water pipe connections and connect up the 12 volt to it and also the looms that run to the front to charge the batteries. So we'll put this two-way connector on first. And it just literally slots in like that. And then lock and tab, blue lock and tab goes forward and that's now in place. Okay, so next up after that high voltage connector is the 12 volt main feed. So one goes from the charger up to the 12 volt battery, which is this one. And this one goes from the, uh, from the charger all the way to the front to the fuse box. So that's what feeds all the main uh, internal electrics on the original loom. So what we'll do is bolt this up to the charger on the front with one single M8 bolt. This is a control loom wire, so this is a low voltage control. So it's all can wires and power wires. So this goes from the VCU down at the front into the charger here. So a simple latch. Next up is the main loom that goes up through the original fuel tank holes. This is a later type hole and we supply the, the original grommet as well. So everything for the loom feeds up through this hole into the boot floor. This includes all the charger and charge port, all the release button cables and everything else that we need to control the charging. Now we're on to the charge port and there's really been some thought going to this by Felton because it's a, a touch point as you charge and it's also visually like seen by everybody outside the car rather than have a nasty, ugly, big black plastic charge port. They've actually made a cap to cover it just like a fuel cap, but in there there is a type two charger. Now this goes into the car, it just pokes through the original hole where the, the fuel cap uh, would have gone, the spout from the tank would have come through the hole here, and you don't need to change this hole at all. This is developed to go straight in, and the cap screws on from the other side and holds it in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit this. After the charge port's been installed, the connection from it to the onboard charger needs to be placed down through the hole that the loom just came through. Connector, charger. And then there's a lock on the top here, which locks the connection on. This controls all the charging protocol for the car. When you plug the charger in, tells the lock motor to lock, the car to take charge, all of that. Also prevents the car from driving whilst on charge, so it's very important. That fits just up here. Connector here to plug into the charge ECU. That one goes up here. And again, locks in. And you can clip the loom up in here once uh, all the rest of the boot has been done. We now have the connectors for the lock motor that's on the charge port and the PPCP lines from the charge port. 
there you go into connectors here. You can't get them the wrong way around because all the connections are different sizes or uh, different keyways. He says plugging the wrong one in. <laughs> it wouldn't go in. <laughs> right, anyway. <laughs> Stop charge switch. Got a nice click to it. This bolts in just down here. This is where the original fuel tank strap would have bolted. Obviously we don't have the fuel tank now. So now we can run our stop charge switch down here. And then that connects up to the final plug left this side of the loom. No, it's not. It's not 50 kilos. That's 33 kilos of battery. What does it say on the plate? I can't remember. The final connection to be made into the boot, apart from the 12 volt battery, which is clearly missing, that'll be the last thing it goes on, is the communication line to the rear battery pack. And that plugs in just down here. As you can see, there's only a small amount of parts left to fit to the car. Unfortunately, well not unfortunately for me, I'm going on holiday. So Chris will have to finish this with Gary and take all the glory, I imagine. All that's left is the front battery pack, the PTC heater box, the 12 volt battery, and then just the dashboard and the final connections inside. Easy work for the pair of them, but this car will be rolling in no time. Now that Gary and Nick have installed the rear battery pack, it's in time to put the front one in. Rear pack has three modules, as you know, and this one has five modules in it, as well as the BMS, contactors, and all the other bits, as you've seen. Um, easier to put this in with a gantry because it wants to go straight down, whereas an engine crane tends to sort of have a bit of a swing to it, doesn't it? So yeah. let's try and get this in then, shall we? All right. We'll try not to scratch the paintwork. Yeah, let's not scratch it. Mario will probably kill us both. Yeah. As you can see, we've been touching the high voltage cables and not been getting electrocuted and not had gloves on because all the safety disconnects are currently out. So there's no way of any HV coming out of any of the battery packs as long as these are removed. So on install, always have these out, have them away until everything is plugged in together and you're ready to go live, then you clip these in. So these other HV cables and stuff will get rooted and tidied up afterwards. And these have got keyways on them, which go onto the little red marks here, these little rings, which do move. So we tend to just mark them. They basically push down, locating like that. And then there's this little bit here that you slide out to lock it in place so it cannot come out. And then this one is the one for the motor and inverter. So it's a two stage. If you want to release it, you've got to do that. And then that. And this simply goes onto here. So here we have two fittings on the front for the battery, which tie straight into the, the subframe. And there's another fitting, two in the back, is there? There's, there's one on that there's side. There's one on the side, which is an M10 down in the cradle. Yep. And then there's a, another M8 stud at the back that fits onto the cradle. So there's four points that it's tied, the front battery box is tied into the cradle. It means it can't come out. It shouldn't do. It's on with a click and a clack. So all the excess will just feed back down the back of the vehicle. And then we have this one, which is charger, DC, DC, and PTC cabin heater. So one side obviously roots up to the cabin, and the other side roots down to the charger DCC, and this is now gonna loop back up and plug in next to the one we had, just make sure it's released. Yeah. Once again, this is a two-stage, you pull that out, push that one down, then you've got to push that one down to actually remove it. So it's two-stage removal. You can't just pull them off. Right, those are in. So we're now gonna pull the slack out of these cables and get them all neatly zip tied in place. So we're just adding a bit of extra protection for the HV cables before we tie them up to the subframe. The key thing is, is to keep the HV cables away from the rotating drive shaft and inner CVs. So we fit skid plates to the Mini to make them more aerodynamic. Actually, I'm lying. It's to stop you smashing stuff into the floor. The system doesn't sit any lower than original, but the country roads in the UK are pretty bumpy, so you end up getting scratches like this. And they should look like this. Part of the mini kit for Felton comes with a, a cabin harness. So you have this connector which goes through a bulkhead here, which you'll see in garage fit right now. And then you have on that your gauges, your heater box, and all the connectors on here to plug straight in. So there's a lot more on this one because it's got the AEM dashboard, which we don't normally have. 
Now, I'm gonna try and get this heater box into place. We've got the HV cable here. It should fit on all the original fittings. That's how it's been designed. So it should just lift up in place. Jump onto the two little hooks up there, which I've made loads of noise. And there should be two fittings that it screws into just up here. Now on the front of here, you have two outputs. You have one which goes up and goes to your blowers up here. They just tuck up underneath simply push on so you can demist your windscreen and then you have these two which go to the cabin there's a cover plate that goes on here with some usb connectors as well just to make it really nice and pretty we'll now have a look at the gauges now this is the gauge set for the mini now these are a set of speed hut gauges in which we have miles per hour kilowatts, we have motor temp and battery temp. Now these simply plug into the loom I showed you earlier. They can be in this position, which is where we've chosen to put them, but you could actually put them in front of the steering wheel in an original cluster if you wanted to go that route, but we have our nice digital AEM display in this car. Okay, so next up, now we've got the interior, um, all the HV in place is down to your low voltage battery. So every conversion still uses a 12 volt battery it's a simple lead acid battery, and this still powers all the internal electrics. So it goes into the original place on the Mini, with your positive at the front and your negative at the rear. So we'll get that in place, we'll get the connectors on, and then get all the loom in place and wired up. And we're another step closer to getting this thing moving. So one key thing that you must do before you turn the system on is that you need to prime the water pump. The Bosch water pump should never be um, run dry. So uh, the mix we use is a glycol 50-50 mix. So that's 50% concentrate and 50% distilled water. And then simply just filling up through the top here. So there'll be lots of bubbling and you'll probably need about three and a half liters of, um, of coolant now. So you can see there that's bubbling. And then what I'll do is I'll just turn the system on very quickly and you should see and hear the water pump running and it'll suck through some of that coolant. When you get to this level here, so uh, the expansion bottle or fill tank as we call it, is at this level and there's no more bubbles, that's it. The system's completely primed and you're ready to go on to the next stage. As you've seen, coolant has been bled, the brakes have been bled, and the 12 watt system's now been wired up by our beautiful assistant, Gary. Thank you. We're now gonna do the most important bit, which is put the safety disconnect in so no one can electrocute themselves. So hopefully this has all been wired up correctly. Things like that, click that in. And now the most important bit, which is the keys, which we'll give to Gary and the lovely keychain, which I think is really appropriate for Nick, to be honest. Definitely. There you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. So ignition on with the brake pedal down. Yep, brake pedal's down. The contact is on their clicky thing, the water pump is running, so we know that the, the coolant is circulating. Yep. And now you're gonna select gear and hopefully those wheels are gonna spin. Let's see, accelerator. Yeah. Hey, there we go. As you can see, the mini kit is done and fitted and all with the help of the Felton team. So if you want a mini kit and you want one converted, reach out to Felton and one of their dealers and well, come back to the channel next time where me and Nick are gonna get the bonnet on and the other bits on and take this for a little road trip. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.